Hey friends, what's going on? This is David Potts with Song Notes, and in today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to play a simple twist of fate. This is the Bob Dylan classic from 1975, the second track off his Blood on the Tracks album, which is one of my favorite of all time here. So I got this PDF chord sheet. You can get it over at my uh, website, playsongnotes.com. It gives you three fantastically well-crafted, edited, curated, designed pages made by me to help you learn this song, both when you're watching my video and after you watch my video when you're practicing, or if you just want to remember the lyrics to perform it somewhere. It's all there waiting for you. Check it out. It's lesson 351. Um, page one is going to give you all the lyrics, everything you need to know for the entire song. Page two, I'll show you the chord progressions. I'm going to show you the tabs for the chords played in two different ways, and then I'm going to show you just some general tips on strumming, about three different options there. And finally, on page three, I have a nice nice tab for the entire sequence using a relatively simple strum it's designed to help you get mastery over the bass note down strum bass note down strum that you're going to need for this entire song right so check that out let's get into it skip ahead if you know what you're looking for and final note is just thank you to all of you who are supporting me on patreon i hope you find my lessons helpful and these chord sheets helpful i have over 200 of them available to you uh, it's really really appreciated by me that the support you guys are giving me month after month after month it keeps these lessons coming so check out the website and i'll see you all on the other side. Let's do it. All right, so let's start this lesson off again. I just want to do a recap of the tuning and the capo and all that stuff because this really matters and I don't, I don't want you getting lost in the weeds here. My lesson is going to be standard tuning, no capo. I'm going to use chords in the key of E and you can basically play along with Dylan's version for the most part. Here's the one caveat though. To play along with Dylan, you actually need to tune your guitar up like a quarter step so that your A4 pitch equals 450 hertz instead of 440. If you don't know what that means, then don't worry about it. But just know Dylan's guitar is a little bit sharp. And if you try to play along with him, it won't sound good unless you do that, right? Now, Dylan also is using open D tuning, and he's using a capo on the second fret, and he's using chords in the key of D. I'm not teaching it that way. My whole goal with this lesson is to make an easy version of the song that keeps you in standard tuning, okay? So I have more notes here in my PDF if you want clarification there, but I just wanna call that out because this is kind of tricky. But uh, again, standard tuning is what I'm doing. No capo, key of E. Let's do it. All right, now let's look at the chord shapes. And I'm gonna teach you the chord progression at the same time here because this is just the one progression you'll need for the entire song. So you'll learn this once and you'll be in good shape. Later on in a little bit, I'm gonna show you some strumming patterns to show you how to approach strumming and sound like Dylan. But first, let's learn the chords and let's learn the progression. We're gonna do them at the same time. So the first three chords here, uh, this is perhaps one of the trickiest parts of this song, is you're gonna to need to go from an E major chord. And then we're going to go to an E major 7. Now, I like to do this four string version where we're basically going to have a first fret on the third and fourth string and then open first and second string. I'll come back to that in a second. Then we're going to go to an E7, okay, a regular E7. I'm doing the four string version here, and then we go to an A. We'll be on that for two measures. Then we're going to go to an A minor for two measures. And then we're gonna go a quick change here from an E to a B to an A, and then back to an E for four counts, a B for four counts, and then an E for eight counts, okay? Let me talk about some of the nuance here because there's quite a bit going on. Now, the first three chords, this E to the E major seven to the E seven, the most important part here is this descending bass note. And if you look at my four string version of these chords on my tabs here, the thickest string that I'm playing is the fourth string and it's going down from the second fret to the first fret to the open fourth string. And that's really important because that descending bass note really gives an important part of the vibe of these first three chords, okay? So I wanna teach you these. I'm showing you the four string version here because it's easier to do and it creates a cleaner sound. That's the important part is we want this descending bass note to be the lowest note in the chord. So a good way to practice it is you pluck the bass string and then you do a strum of those thinnest four strings, okay? For your regular E. Now for the E major seven, the tricky part is your index finger is gonna to have to switch to the fourth string and your middle finger is going to go to the third string. So you're switching roles there. And don't strum the, the sixth or fifth string, right? If you need to, just lightly lean these, this finger into it so it mutes those strings, right? Then we go to an E7. This is going to be open fourth string, and our index finger goes back to the third string, first fret. 
Okay? And we're going to end on the A, on that first line there. The regular A. Okay, so back to those E's really quick. The idea of the four string version, again, is just giving you the clean bass note. So doing a sort of bass note pluck. Bass note pluck is a very good way to practice this. I'm going to come back to this later for the E major 7. Okay, don't worry about rhythm just yet. I'll come to that in a second. And then E7. Okay, very nice way to do it. Now, if you want to do a six string version of these chords, you can, but you want those same fourth string bass notes, in my opinion, to sort of lead things. So you play the fourth string, do your strum, then for the E major seven, you use this finger position. The reason I don't like the six string version of this, it sounds kind of muddy, right? When you're strumming it especially, it doesn't have that clean sound. But then an E seven, uh, open fourth string would be like this, okay? So you can do this. You can do all six strings if you want. I don't think it sounds as good. That's why I like the fourth string version, okay? So that's how you play those, those three chords. I'm gonna come back with strumming and I'm gonna show you a tab for the whole thing here, which will be easier. But let's go to the A real quick. Now the A, a couple of things about the A. This is a regular A major chord, but here's the deal. I also have this tab for the A sus two, which has the thinnest two strings open. Here's what I would say, whenever you're on the A, if you want, you can play an A sus2 instead. Okay, it has a nice open sound, it's a nice, a bit more distinct, right? And you can, if you want, go between the A and the A sus2, right? You can do that. Then we have an A minor, okay, regular A minor. And then we have this transition here from the E to the B to the A. Let me talk about this, okay? Regular E, I do a six string E here. Now for the B, the tricky part here is a B would be a bar chord. What we want to do instead is make it just a sort of uh, open, open first and second string. This is way easier to play because we're not barring anything. So it's second fret, fourth fret, fourth fret. Don't play the lowest string. Leave the thinnest two strings open. And here is a really cool part, is check this out. We're always going to the B after we're on an E. And if you're on an E, and you can do the six string version of the E on this sort of second line here, here's the cool part. When you're going from the E to the B, your ring finger is staying on the fourth string. It slides up to the fourth fret. You put the other fingers down. Okay, so again, E to the B. Practice that transition and your ring finger remains in contact with that fourth string the whole time, okay? So this is technically a B sus four, but I'm just calling it a B, okay? So you know what I mean. Now, when we go back from the, when we go to the E to the B, and we go back to the A, I, I just slide these two fingers down and I do an A sus two. And again, my ring finger is staying on the fourth string, so check this out. Very, very handy. So this is an example of using an A sus2 instead of the A. It sounds nice and it has that openness. And that's consistent openness in those three chords, which is very nice. Okay, and then the last uh, couple, last four measures are E, one, two, three, four, to B, two, three, four, to E, two, three, four, E, two, three, four. So now we know the chords, and again, see my PDF, I explain all this stuff if you want the nuance there. But now let's talk about strumming, because this is a really important part um, to both play it like Dylan, but also if you want a simpler version here, I'll show you a simple strum that lets you capture the vibe of Dylan, but keeps things a lot easier, right? So the first simple strum I'm gonna show you is this idea of doing a bass down, bass down, bass down, bass down. When I say bass, it's really a down strum, but the important part is you're only playing the bass string of that chord. So if we're doing the four string E, I'm plucking the fourth string and I'm doing a down strum on all four strings here. And a little mini tip is I'm sort of leaning this finger into the fifth string just by kind of like, you know, kind of being like a rude person at the movie theater and leaning into the person next to you. That's okay here. What that's going to do is it's going to uh, make the fifth string kind of dead. It's going to kill, it's going to mute the fifth string. And that way, if you accidentally strum the fifth string, nothing will happen. Okay? 
So bass down, bass down, bass down, bass down. Don't worry about rhythm just yet. Now let's go to the E major seven, do the same thing. Bass down, bass down, bass down, bass down. And now let's go to the E seven. Bass down, bass down, right? And then to the A. Bass down, bass down, bass down, bass down. We'll get to rhythm in a second. Just keep it nice and simple. Take your time on your switches. A minor. Okay, and now this part's tricky. We're gonna do a single bass down on the E, a single bass down on the B, and then two bass downs on the A, okay? So here's the E. We'll use the six string version of the E. Let's do that one more time. Okay, low six string, down. And we switch to a B, fifth string bass, then we do the down strum, and then the A, fifth string bass note. Do it again on the A. And then we go to an E, we'll do it twice on the E. Twice on the B, and then four times on the E. Now, the cool thing I made is on page three of my PDF here is I have a tab showing you this entire thing. Check this out. You can go through the whole sequence just doing a bass down, bass down, bass down, bass down. Switch to the E major seven, bass down, bass down, bass down. So let's go through this now, one time slowly. And this is a great thing to practice because I'm gonna show you some more Dylan strums which are a bit more heavy and you know, bass down, the bass down, the bass down, the bass down. up. I don't wanna bring in up strums yet though, I wanna keep it simple. So the first line uh, looks like this. I'll play through the whole thing. And I'm gonna bring in a steady tempo here, okay? Okay, that's the end of it. Let's go back to the third line here on the screen right now. Trickiest part is this E to the B to the A. For sure, it's the trickiest part of this whole thing. Let's do it again. So we'll start in the A minor. A minor, down, bass, down, bass, down, bass, down, E, B, A. And then we go to an E, right, oh, on the next line. Um, this is where using that A sus2 is really handy when you go back to the A. So you can only use the A sus2 there if you want. It's all up to you, okay? So this is on page three of my PDF. It's a great way to practice it. But the next thing I want to teach you all is how to strum this more like Dylan, okay? And this is where the strum gets a bit more loose and organic. Um, but if you want to sound like him, you can. So there's two different patterns you can do. One is a sort of bass up down, a bass up down, a bass up down. And you really need to have a little bit of delicacy and nuance and sort of like touch, you know, to your strumming here. You don't want to overdo it. You don't want to be like. That's just going to be too, too brutal. You kind of want to have a little bit of just feathery feel. And that's hard to sort of uh, teach and explain, but it's an important part if you want to do it. So um, let me just show you. I'll play through the whole progression once like this to tell you to show you what this would look like if you want to work up to it. And then I'm going to show you a second pattern, which is a bit easier in my opinion. And it's actually how I like to play it. So here's the bass up down, the bass up down up for the entire thing. And what I'm going to say about this is on the, on the um, up down up, I'm only really focusing on the thinnest two or three strings. Okay, even for the beefier chords. Don't overdo it. It's, oh, it's better to start small and then dial it up compared to the other way around. Okay, so starting at the top.
That's the entire thing, and you could sort of uh, sing along like that if you want. The other pattern I like to do here is more of a bass down, up down, up 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 bass down. Now a couple of things there. Uh, my bass strums, it's okay if I kind of get two or three strings. As long as they're on the bassier end of the chord, that's fine. You don't need to just do the single bass note, you know. Um, that's another note there. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of how I would play it myself personally. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play through three verses of the song, because it, it's it's five verses total, but you get the idea after, after two or three for a playthrough. And I'm going to use the bass down. Up, down, up, bass, down, as my foundation, right? That's my preferred strumming pattern. I think it just is a nice way to sort of be a bit more chill and casual with this song. But you can use what you want, and all together, uh, with what I show you here, you can play this entire song. So is here is what it sounds like when you put it all together. Let's do it. So there you have it. That's how you do it. You got to sing. Um, I wish I could sing higher and, and pull the song off, but I can't. But, you know, um, this is how you play it. Whoa, hey now. So that's going to be it for this one. Um, get the PDF again. You can get it at my website. First page gives you the lyrics for the entire song, some chords at the bottom, strumming pattern, tweak sheet there, uh, chord progression here. Page two will show you the, um, the tabs for the chords in a few different ways. I'll explain capo and key and all that stuff and strumming pattern stuff at the bottom. And then on page three, again, we have this fantastically written out uh, tab for the entire thing that you can follow. So it's a great way to learn this song. Hey, I hope this is helpful for you. Check out other lessons on YouTube if you want to learn it in a different way. I'm sure there's some other great teachers teaching you this song. But that's going to be it for this one, y'all. Thanks for watching. This has been David Potts. Check out my website, playsongnotes.com, for the all my other lessons, both the videos and the PDFs I have. I got a lot, and I'm very proud of them, and I hope that they are helpful to you. Thanks to all of you who are supporting me on Patreon as well. It's immensely appreciated. I'm going to take off now, and I'll see you all with the next one, y'all. Take care, bye-bye, and have a good one.